हम आपसे आपसे मैं टेस्ट में से जा सकूं वाली से भी कहीं ही है लेट मी सी बाय हैंड्स डोस वो कैन नॉट ही है लेट मी सी बाय हैंड्स डोस वो कैन नॉट ही है आप इफ यू कैन हीर मी रेज अप योर हैंड इफ यू कैन हीर मी रेज अप योर हैंड और सेंड ए टेस्ट मैसेज वेरी गुड सो समबडी कैन हीर दैट मींस द ऑडियो इज वर्किंग सो द पर्सन वो is saying he cannot hear us so check um his or her audio we've got it one hand up shows that people can hear all right any other person who can hear me should raise up the hand okay imanuel has raised the hand up um Acton has raised the hand. I can see Nana Kusia can hear me. Um, yeah, a couple of you can hear, so I think it's cool. Samuel has also raised the hand that she, he can hear. It means if you cannot hear, then you have to cross check with your audio and see. Great. So we'll just take. We'll start from here now. So, like I said, we are looking at circle theory. Okay, this morning your hand is up. It means you can also hear. Very good. So let's look at a quick introduction of a circle. What is a circle that um want to talk about? What's a circle? We want to define circle first, and then by definition we are saying that circle is the locus of a point equidistant from a fixed point. Equidistant from a fixed point, circle is a locus of a point. Equidistant from a fixed point, and you can see from the diagram here that we have a fixed point and we have a mobile point. P is a mobile point, and then A is a fixed point. And so you can see that P is moving in such a way that it obeys a particular condition. The condition is that it must keep equal distance from the center, and By definition, we say a circle is a locus of a point equidistant. That means equal distance from a fixed point, right? Then parts of a circle, because we are going to talk about circle theorem, and we need to understand um, circles and its parts so we can use it to answer questions. Let's go through the part of a circle. The first part we want to talk about is circumference, and circumference simply means Total distance around a circle. The total distance around a circle, and we can write this: circumference of a circle is the total distance around the circle. Circumference can also be referred to as the perimeter of a circle. You don't need to write this now because we may not get time to write all. So what we are doing is that we are recording this section. It will be uploaded on YouTube so that you can go back. And then make your notes so you can move fast. Because if everybody wants to write, we don't know who has finished and who has not finished, right? So let's keep it that way. And so let's talk about arc. What is an arc? Arc simply means part of a circumference. It's a portion of a circumference of a circle. That is arc. Then radius. We'll be using radius a lot in identity or in, in studying the. Um, The circle theorem. So let's understand what a radius is. Radius simply means the length of a straight line drawn from the center of a circle to a point on its circumference. The plural of radius is radii. So if you hear me saying the word radii, okay, radii simply means I have two or more radius. Then we are going to use another word called diameter. Diameter. So when we talk of diameter, all we are saying is, is just a straight line that passes through the center of a circle from one point of the circumference to another. Or we say diameter of a circle is a length of a line segment joining two points on the circle and passing through the center. 
Then another word we'll be using a lot in circle theory is called chord. Chord. When we talk of chord, all we are saying is chord is also a line. Okay, it's also a line that joins from one point of the circumference to the other. When this chord passes through the center, then it's called diameter. Understand that? When a chord passes through the center, it's called diameter. But then if it doesn't pass through the center, then we keep it as chord as it is. And so it divides a circle into two areas or two segments. Anytime you draw a chord, you see that you get two separate areas, okay? And these two areas, we call them segment. Very soon we will understand what segment is. Let's see segment. If we draw a chord, like I said, we keep two areas. This is one area. And then the bigger space also is another area. Another area too is here. We call this smaller area minor segment, and we call the bigger one major segment. In menstruation one, we'll learn how to find the area of a minor segment and the area of a major segment. So by definition, we say segment of a circle is an area bounded by an arc. An arc because from here to that, we can see arc here. We can also see arc from here through to that. So by an arc and a chord, we create a segment. Another word we'll be using in learning circle theorem is sector. So sector here, we have two red eye. Anytime you have two red eye and an arc, we create a sector. So look at this sector here, sector, then another sector also bigger. So we see we have minor sector and we have major sector. Great. So by definition, we'll write a sector of a circle is a region or an area bounded by two radii of the circle and an arc. Great. Then we have a quadrant. We have a quadrant. What is quadrant? Look at the word quadrant. Something that has to do with four, right? Good. When we have two radii, and we create central angle. You can see central angle here. And that central angle happens to be 90 degrees. Then that special sector is given a new name as quadrant. So tell me, how many quadrants can we get in, in a full circle? I'm sure your answer is four, right? Great. Because we are going, we can have four different areas. If we divide the circle into four equal parts, each of them will have a central angle of 90 degrees. So by definition, quadrant is one quarter area of a circle. Beautiful. Now let's look at the last term we'll be using in circle theory called tangent. What is tangent? Let's locate any point at all on the circumference. And let's draw a line from anywhere to meet the circle at the point that we located earlier. This line is called tangent. Now, let me explain something here for you to see. So we have a tangent here, right? Good. If the line passes through the circle is called second. And if it, it starts from one end to the other end without going through it and it ends, it's called chord. We said that already. So we have chord, we have second, we have tangent. Tangent is where the line will touch the circumference 
at the point of tangency. So this point here is called point of tangency. Those of you who are doing elective math in calculus, you will understand this better because you are going to use it in solving questions in calculus. So in summary, this, these are the parts of a circle we've been able to identify. A segment, an arc, a chord, a diameter, radius, sector, quadrant, circumference, and tangent. So when you are able to get the asset, we're able to get access to the video on YouTube, you can take your time and make your notes nicely. Now let's go through the theories. What are circle theories? We have a number of them. We'll not be able to finish all today, but at least we'll go far. So that our next meeting will be able to kill everything it has to do with circle theory. Theorem number one. What we are seeing here is if we have a chord, okay, a chord. So you know this is a chord now because we've mentioned a chord or an arc. And we subtend an angle by the chord at the circumference. And we subtend another angle by the same chord to the circumference. This theorem says that these very two angles, A and B, are equal. We can verify this using GeoGebra. Let's see how it works with GeoGebra. All right. I'm sure you can see my screen now. My screen visible. Okay, so I can see you can see my screen now. Now what we are saying is that look at the point B and A. Look at the point B and A. I could join them to form a chord, right? I could join them to form a chord like this. So whether we have a chord or without a chord, if we subtend an angle from A and B to the circumference, as you can see the angle with green and that of the angle with um, the mauve color, we see that as I change the length of the arc, the angles also changes. And you can see the angles are the same. No matter what I do, I get the same angle. So what we are saying is that if two angles subtend by the same chord to the circumference, we always get equal angles. It can be more than that. Even if I try creating additional angles, check this one. You can see that the third angle with marked E also will be equal to the two existing angles. We can measure that and see. Thank God for GeoGebra. We can do a lot of animations here. Let's measure this angle and see whether it will give us 45. OK. So we measure it from B to E back to A. And you see the angle is 45. Beautiful. So you can see that whatever you do, so far as these three angles are coming from the same chord or arc, they must always remain the same. That is theorem number one. Now let's take a few examples and see how theorem number one works. So in an objective question, if I give you a question like this. This is the diagram. Find the value of angle mark A in a diagram below or beside or above, depending on where you proposition yours. So what will be the answer for A? 
Can I get someone raising the hand up to tell me the answer for A? Let me see whether my students are with me. Anybody hand up to give me the answer for A? All right. I'm sure you had the answer as 32. Beautiful. That's good. So it's 32 because you can see from here that from this point and that point, we subtain the angle at point A and we subtain the angle also at point E and the two angles are the same. What of this? Find the value of the angle mark A and B in the diagram. Can you see that? So look at where they are coming from. All right, so the angle mark A is So angle mark A is 42, right? Good. And the B also is 42. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Okay. Now let's look at theorem number two. Theorem number two. This time around, we are saying that if we have a chord and the chord is subtend an angle or we subtend an angle from the chord to the center of the circle, let's call that central angle A. From the same ends of the chord, we subtend an angle to the circumference. Let's call that angle B. Now, what is the theorem here? According to the theorem, the angle mark B, twice of it, will be the angle mark A. Or we can say B is equal to half A. B is equal to half A. Once again, we have a circle, we have a center, we have an angle subtained by the chord to the center. We subtain that same, from the same chord to the circumference, the angle over there we say we have something in common. Now let's use GeoGebra to demonstrate this. To see whether what we are saying is true. Right. So here we can see a circle and we can see our chord CD, mark CD. Now on this chord CD, we see an angle A at the center, which is now 116.89 degrees. Now at the same ends of the chord CD, we see See an angle subtended at the circumference at the point E, which is 58.44. Can you see that? Good. Now, I want you to, with your calculator, multiply 58.44 by 2 and see whether your result will be the same as 116.89. You realize that approximately you get the same answer as 116.89. If I change the length of the chord, making the central angle different, you see that still, if you multiply 75.48 times two, which of course I've done it over here, you can see um, the answer will be the same as 150.96. So that is what circle theorem is saying. So even if I move the angle here, I will still get this theorem to be true. 
If I move it here, I will still get this theorem to be true. So you can see that the theorem is true throughout. Can you see that? Beautiful. Okay. So you can see that it's working perfectly. That is what the theorem two is saying that. So whatever I place this, I will still get the same twice of the angle here is equal to the central angle. That is theorem number two. Let's use this theorem to solve few objective questions. Yes, taking two of them. Because I said I'm going to use it. All right, so let's take example and see. What to be the value of the angle marked A in this diagram? I'm, I'm sure you are trying your hand on it to get the answer. Okay, so what is your answer? I'm sure you have 26. Yeah, because you can see that from the code AB, we have an angle 52 at the center. And at the same time, the same code AB subtend an angle to C, which is mark A. So it means twice the angle at A is equal to the angle at the central part of the circle. All right, look at this question too. Find the value of the angle mark A and angle OCB in the diagram. And angle OCB in the diagram. Okay, so what do you get for angle A? I'm sure your answer came as 26, right? Because you can see that the angle over here from the chord AB, the same chord AB sustain an angle at A here. And so twice of A should be the same as 52. So for now we divide 52 by two, and that will give us the angle A. What about the angle OC? Samuel, I can see your hand up. Do you want to ask a question? The, you can I was trying yourself. to answer the question. Come again. No, please, I was trying to answer the question. Oh, okay. So which one are you trying to answer? The OAC, OCB? Yes, sir. Good. Go ahead. Which it will be 27. It will be 27. 27. Where, 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 are you, where are you from? Uh, sir. I mean, the name of your school? Achimota. Oh, okay. Okay, that's great. All right. So your answer came as. 27, is that what you said? Yes, sir. Okay, great. Now let's look at it and see whether really your answer is right. So can you see the line OC and the line OA? Each of them is a radius. And so if each of them is a radius, then it means that we have two radii, which makes the triangle OCA as Isosceles, isosceles triangle, right? Good. And isosceles triangle says that two interior angles are the same. So if these two lines are equal, then these two angles are also equal. 
it makes the whole of this angle here equal to the 54. So if that is true, then the whole of the angle here, I want to erase parts here so that I can see clear. Okay, so this part and that part are equal. So A plus the 26 we had should be equal to 54. Should be equal to 54. Good. So making A the subject, then we can have 54 less 26. And so the answer will be 28, brother. So Samuel, your answer should be 20. I'm sure that's what we we're expecting to say, but then because I don't know, you just say 27 instead of 28, but that's good. It's a good attempt. It's another question here. We have angle mark Y and X. Can we solve this? If you are ready, you just raise your hand up and then give us your answer. After the section, I'll be anticipating that you send your questions and assignment that I'm going to give you to our write um, Gmail account for you or email account for you that you can send your questions and your solutions to questions that are given to you here to joy learning TV. So at my joy online.com. All right. So when we are done, I'll write it again for you. So joy learning TV at myjoyonline.com. You can also subscribe to Joy Learning TV at YouTube. You can go there and download this very lesson so that you can prepare your notes nicely before school resume for you to go back to school. Right. So what is the answer for X and Y? I'm sure you came up as X is equals to 24 because look at chord AB, subtending an angle to the center, the same thing goes to the point C. And so half of 48 should be equal to X. Then we want to manipulate that of the Y. So let's see, look at the arrow here and the arrow there, tell you that those two lines are parallel, right? And so the angle X should be equal to the angle here. And then the angle 48 here should be equal to this angle. So I can put 48 here, good. Now, let's also note that the line OA is a radius and the line OB is also a radius and they are equal. It makes the whole of this angle here equal to that angle because that makes it an isosceles triangle. So if I assume this to be A, then the whole of this should also be called A. A plus A plus 48 should give us 180. And so 2A, should be equal to 180 less 48. If you do that subtraction, you have 132. Dividing that by two will give us um, 132 
divided by two will give us 76, right? Great. So it means that the whole of this angle here is 76. Then we subtract X from that angle because we've already established that the point here is X. Let me clean a bit so that we can see it clearly. Now that we know our angle at that point. So we know the whole of this will be 76 and here alone is 24. So when you subtract 24 from 76, I'm sure that answer will come as 42. And so we get Y to be 42. I think it makes sense. Let me repeat that part again. Let me repeat that part again. What I said was that the angle over here is called X because of alternate angle, right? And the whole of this is equal to that because these two lines are equal. So we have a value here, we don't know. Let me call it A, and that one here we call it A. So A plus A plus 48 will give us 180, which means 2A is equal to 180 less 48. And when we subtract that, we get 132, which is 2A. Now, when we divide both sides by 2, we get our A to be 76. It means that the whole of the angle here, the X plus the Y together will give us the 76. But we've already established that the X is 24. So 24 plus Y should give us 76. Making Y the subject will make Y to be 42. Great. Another question I would like you to try, we'll not solve it here. When the video comes out and you download it, you can work it out. But then when you are done, you get your answer to be 24. You can use so many methods to solve this. You can draw a chord here and find the angle here and the angle there. You can also find this angle by saying twice of this angle should be equal to that. Then these two lines are equal. So you can find this angle and find that. Then you can say the whole of this plus this plus that should give you 180. That is one way. Alternatively, you can also say that The whole of this angle, that angle, this angle, and that must add up to 360. And so twice of this angle here, which is equal to the one here, we subtract it from 360, and that will give us a reflex angle here. And we add the reflex angles together, and we equate it to 360, will give us the answer 24. Let's look at the last theorem for today. So let's look at the, the, the theorem number three. And here we are saying that if we have a chord, okay, and we subtend an angle from the chord to the center, let's call that angle a reflex angle A. When we draw the chord, realize that the chord has given us two different segments. So let me see, we have a segment here. The whole of this is a segment, right? And above also the segment. And so one angle at one segment, the other angle comes to the other segment. That is this one. What we are saying here is that twice the angle B should be equal to the angle A, right? Good. So that is the term number three. Okay, let me repeat that. The angle we create over here, the reflex angle, if the chord is here, opposite that segment, another angle is created by the same chord to the circumference. 
twice the angle of the circumference should be equal to the reflex angle here. That is what this theorem is all about. Or we can say half of A is equal to B. Let's take one example under that. Let's say you are given this question and you want to find the angle A, D, B. Angle A, D, B and angle A, C, B. Try it quickly. We're supposed to close this lesson at one o'clock, but because of the technical challenge that we had, we are extending it to 1.30. So it's only 1.30 we'll end this lesson. We pray that our, on our next meeting, there wouldn't be any problem. Whenever you start for the first time, sometimes you can't be challenged. So bear with us, right? Good. We thank uh, Multimedia for opening up this opportunity for us. Okay, so what is the answer for ADB? That is find the angle A, D, B, that is this one. I'm sure you are getting something like, oh, sorry. Okay, let's see what will happen. So if I know this angle, I can easily know this because according to our second theory, half of this angle should be equal to that angle. And the whole of this is angle around a point and that makes it 360. So if I subtract 2, 20 from 360, then that will give me the angle over here, which of course will be 140. So we can put 140 here, right? Sorry for that. Okay, so I've got it, good. So 140 here. So divide 140 by two, and that will give you 70. So this is 70. Then we want to find ACB. ACB is the angle here. ACB is the angle here. According to what we just established, half of this, half of that, is equal to the ACB, which also will give us 110. So ACB is 110. Okay, so you can try this question on your own and then you get it. Let's see if you can add this theorem to it before 130 so that we can end for today. This is a chord with something an angle to the circumference. Then at the ends of the same chord, we bring another angle to the opposite segment. So we get this. What we are saying is that these two angles ought to be supplementary. That means if you add two, if you add A plus B, you get 180. Again, let me take that part again. We have a circle. So let me draw a circle, a new circle here. And then we have a chord. One angle is subtained to the circumference at one segment, and the other goes to the opposite segment. We say these two angles are supplementary. Supplementary angles means they add up to 180. And if it is complementary, they will add up to 90. So take note of the word complementary angles. Complementary angles. And supplementary angles. Supplementary angles add up to 180, whilst complementary angles add up to 90. Good. So let's see one example or two from here. How will you find the angle mark A? Angle mark A. So you can see that this D and E, F are, I mean, D and F points are connected to a line and the line is a chord, right? So we have this and we have that. They are 
at opposite side of the sediment. And so they must be complementary. Sorry, supplementary. They must add up to 180. So we'll say that A plus 98 should give us 180. So A is equals to 180 minus 98. Good. So that should be our answer, right? So if you subtract, then you get your answer. Then how do we find a B? B also, the whole of this B and the whole of the 74 also are in opposite segment. Check this one. You see this one? Ah, they're in opposite segment. So again, we can say whatever angle here plus that to add up to 180. So we can do um, B plus 74 to be equal to 180. And I'm sure this one, everybody can find B, right? All right, so let's look at this. I want to give you assignment, and assignment must depend on this particular theorem. So let's quickly go to that so that I can give you the assignment for the day. All right. Okay, so what we are saying here is very simple. The easiest theorem is this one. This one we have a tangent. Sorry, we have a diameter. And we obtain an angle from the ends of the diameter to the circumference. All we are saying is that that angle always makes 90 degrees. It always makes 90 degrees. So whatever the angle would be, I think the battery has run down very soon. It will, it will be as you take time. Unless we install the driver or something, I don't know whether it will be automatic. So I'm almost done. I'll use this one to write it. Okay, so what we are trying to suit my. Um, okay, let's go. So, what we are saying is that even if I draw the line from here and I draw from that end of the diameter, then we still get 90 degrees. That's what we are trying to say. So, angle subtended by a diameter to the circumference is always right angle. Great. So, if that is true, we can use that idea to solve this question. I'm going to give you a series of questions from here which I will anticipate that you solve all of them and email it to us on the um, Gmail account that I gave you, which I said you can email it to um, joylearningtv at myjoyonline.com. Joylearningtv at myjoyonline.com. That is the email address. You can use it to send all your questions. In fact, as a matter of fact, this program is purely for you and your teacher so that you can have an interaction, okay? And it's free, thanks to um, Joy Learning um, TV. So we are going to solve all these series of questions and then you send them to us. We'll get you the feedback as well. Okay, so how do we answer for the question A? How, how do you get the answer for A? How do you get A? Very simple, right? Because we know this side is going to be 90 degrees. The top here is going to be 90 degrees. Okay, so 90 degrees will come this way, right? So it means if I add this angle, 43 plus A plus 90 degrees, and equate it to 180, I'll get my angle A. And A will be 47. Good. Now we want to find the area of triangle ABC, sorry, and triangle ABD, ABD area. And we know area of a triangle is half base times height, right? Half base times height. And so if it's half base times height, 
And here the base is not going to be the 15. Take note because the right angle is here. And so the height can be either this or the distance here. So you can use Pythagoras theorem to generate the side over here. And then you use that to find the area. If you do it very well, your answer will come as 54. So question number two is for you to do it and submit. Question number three, you have to do it and submit. Question number four, you do it and submit. So I'm giving you four questions to answer. Next on our teacher and you is going to be integrated science. With your facilitator from St. Mary's Senior High School by name, Sir George Loco. And I'm sure you have been enjoying his lesson on the Joy Learning TV. He's going to meet you on our next um, time with teachers. I mean, your, your time with your teachers or teacher and you. Encourage all your friends. Tell them you've started. I know most well, some people came online, but because we didn't start on time, they didn't know whether their program is going to come on or not, so they left. But Thank God for the few of you who were able to make it to this particular time. So next week, you will meet your science teacher. I think that's going to be teaching you. So next week, Saturday at 12 o'clock, you meet your core science teacher. That is um, Sir George Loco. So enjoy the rest of your day. Yeah, from St. Mary's Senior High School. So when you send your questions to me, I'll mark them and then send them back to you. Right. If you have any concern, if you have any question, if you think something can be done better, um, let me open up for some few minutes. You can bring out your view, whatever you have in mind, you can share with us. So yeah, when you are sending your questions, whatever, um, add your name and the school and then the class to it. So you add your name, your school, and your class. In fact, we will be giving so much surprises to you. I mean, we'll give you special uh, packages if you're able to do your assignment and follow whatever you are doing on Joy Learn. A lot of package for you, a lot of work for you. In fact, you can go with us and then fill in your exams. Trust me. From this time until the time you write your words, you get the best out of joy learning. Stay tuned and continue um, coming online for more of Chita and you. My name is Ivan Sode. I'll meet you next time. Bye bye.